Welcome to True Backstage and Road Stories. So, man, first thing, let's get this nasty stuff out of the way that I got to do. Please like and subscribe and share and hit the little notification bell so YouTube can do its thing. Please, please, please. And comment. Make sure you comment, please. And I'm going to adjust this camera a little bit for you. There we go. So, um, I'm not going to pull a pass again today, but I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> it's a pretty good story, actually. And it's about uh, Rick James. We had a work box when we took on the road. So we were doing a show in the Astrodome, and we had our work box there. The work box was probably four and a half feet tall and probably two and a half feet wide. It had drawers in it that were recessed, so you could put a big piece of plywood in it to make it all flush so when it went in the truck nothing got hung up even the handles were recessed like uh like an anvil case those handles they had springs on them come out and but they would flop back in when you let them go because you don't want anything sticking out when you're loading you know something to walk by and get caught on or any of that stuff so uh, we put handles on the front of it and then we had to, we used what's called a coffin lock. I don't know anybody knows what a coffin lock is, but a coffin lock is what they actually use to close coffins up with. And you use a 5 16 hex key or Allen wrench, and we have T-handled Allen wrench we carry around with us and open all the boxes, you know. Sometimes when you, when you load in, you would just have somebody with the Allen wrench open all the boxes. And then when everything was unloaded, they go back and close them all. And these were recessed in the wood. You would chisel out these holes for these coffin locks and put them. It was kind of like, no, nope, you don't want to see a lock on a coffin. You know, you don't want to see it on the outside or the inside. Of course, they cover the inside with, you know, satin or silk or whatever. But they're, re they're, they're inside the wood. So you got to chisel out the hole to stick the lock in. And I'll show you a picture of all this stuff. And... Walter, my dog, man, my dog's coming here messing with me. Hey, Walter, you want to say hi to the camera? Hey, man. Anyway, so we're doing the show, and, and Walter, quit it. Get out of here. So we're doing the show in, in the Astrodome, and, and when you pull this, it's a big piece of plywood that covers the the drawers up in, in the work box and so you pull it off and if you turn it around people stick most companies uh the company i work for had a bunch of geniuses or a couple of geniuses that worked that owned the the business they went to rice university and to go to rice university you got to be a smart sung gun and, and and i mean goodness these guys were smart man they still smart both of them and but on everybody would put on the inside of the workbox cover you would have pictures of your loved ones or you know backstage passes stick on passes that were cool looking you know every time you go to a different city it'd be a different color or different something anyway you paste all this stuff on the inside of the cover I'd written on there red snapper and it was on the front or the inside of our work case or the door. So not really a door, but the cover. So I had it. Usually when you do this, you take the cover off and you lean it up. So everybody working can see. I had this sitting there and I had usually when you have it sitting there, sitting there all day for the crew and everybody, the local people, local crew, that is to see it. And, you know, it's just a thing. So before the show or before sound check or anything, you turn the thing around, turn the cover around. So it's facing the work box and nobody sees all this. You don't want, you know, you don't want the promoter to see, you don't want the band to see it. You don't want, you know, if they got girlfriends or whatever with them, you, you don't want them to see it. So you turn it inside. Well, I, this one time, Rick James, we were doing the lights and sound for Rick James in the audience, in, in the Astrodome. 
I'm telling you, it was a good size picture of this naked lady that said Red Snapper on it. So, Rick James, he's doing the show. So, I think we turn the cover around. I mean, he saw this. He comes on for sound check. He comes up, and I probably didn't see him pull up or whatever. How I couldn't see him. I must have been busy or something. But he saw the naked lady and completely naked and saw where it said red snapper so we do the show and i know i must i know i turned it around and faced the work box but what he does he's doing his show now rick james man (laughs) what a character man i loved him Uh, uh what a character so he's doing his show and all of a sudden He's, during his performance, he walks over to the work case, which was actually on stage. It wasn't off the stage because I think that we were on a dirt surface because they do the rodeo. So they had a dirt surface, and then they had a, a built-up stage. And, and so the work box was on stage, and I'm pretty sure I, <laughs> I didn't leave the cover of showing for the audience to see. So he comes up to the work box and grabs the cover by one of the anvil handles and picks it up. And, of course, they're videoing this show as well. So he picks it up and goes, Red Snapper! And walks all the way across the front of the stage and back to the work box. And he's holding this up like it's a showpiece, man. Like something just come out of an art gallery. (laughs) And it was so, so, so funny. And I'm going, oh, no, because everybody knows I did that. I put that picture on there. That was me. Everybody, all the crew and everybody knew that was me that did it. And, oh, Lord, when he did that, I just, my heart sunk. Because I just knew I was going to hear the end of it. Now, I don't know if they edited that out, but uh, I kind of looked for, I Googled it, see Rick James in the Astrodome. I couldn't find anything. So they probably either edited that part out or they, <laughs> they just don't have it on there. But I got to tell you, man, I also have to tell you that, you know, God says, you know, asking you shall receive. Well, I asked for a camera, and my friend Jimmy Withers sends me a camera. I asked for a tripod. My friend Noel sends me a tripod with Baphomet's Lounge, you know, and I asked some help from Dogman Homestead. He gives me help on my uh, editing. And then Sons Lawn Care. You know, I got to mention him. And most of all, my friend Greg Stevens, who gave me this microphone. And I mean, what, you know, what? So I put on there my last one that I needed some lights. I have some old 50s desk lamps, is what I'm using. This is what you're seeing now. But this guy emails me from England. He's from Liverpool, was where the Beatles, you know, and the Cavern and the Ferry Cross the Mercy. This guy from Liverpool emails me and says, Mark, I saw your video and I know you need lighting. He says, I just came into some extra money and go to Amazon.com and pick out what you want and I'll send it to you. I was like, oh, no, (laughs) what? Are you kidding me? I couldn't believe it, man. And so I picked out some of these cheap lights that I thought, you know, I didn't want to stick the guy. And and the ones I really wanted were, you know, a few hundred dollars. So I sent him three different brackets. You know, none of them real expensive. One of them, I think, was 40 bucks. One of them was like 80. One of them was like 120 these light sets, double light sets. So, and I told him, I said, Hey man, just pick one. I don't care. You know, just pick one, whatever you want to do. And he says, look, Mark, he said, I told you, don't worry about the price, get what you want. So he sends me another email back with a a link to this light on these two lights on Amazon and they're led lamps 
They got remote controls with tripods, the whole nine yards. He said, will this work? And I was like, what? That's the ones I really wanted. So the ones I really wanted, he sends me a link. And he said, they'll, they'll be there Saturday. So today's Wednesday, and I can't wait till my lights get here. And I'm telling you, I cannot wait. This guy's name is Joe. He's from Liverpool, and this guy rocks. And he's on disability, man, and he has a disabled son. So, oh, Lord, you know, for somebody like that to do something like that for me means so much to me. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I, I, it blows, it, it almost brings tears to my eyes, man. I tell you, it's just amazing how wonderful you people really are. It's amazing. So, you know what? Thanks for watching, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thanks for all y'all and what y'all do. Man, I, I couldn't make it without you. Thanks so much. See you later. Bye.